Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So I really have to say I'm very sorry that the second part of the Regency Empire Bridgerton series inspired dress is not up yet. I'm very sorry about that. I just received an email from my fabric supplier saying that the fabric is out of stock sadly and that they ordered it but it's gonna come a little later. That's why the second part is gonna have to wait just a little bit until I get my fabric for that one. For this video, I thought it would be a nice idea to upgrade my DIY dress form. As you guys know, I made my DIY dress form after the bootstrap patterns that are available on their website. I'm not affiliated with them. I just highly recommend their patterns because it worked so, so well for me. And I'm really, really excited to actually share with you that I reached out to Alicia from Bootstrap Fashion and she kindly agreed to give you guys a discount code for your patterns. I'm gonna put the discount code right here and also include a link to their website in the description box below. You're gonna get a 15% discount off of your order. And with that, let's jump into the video. Once you put in all your measurements, you should receive an email with your pattern. Just print it out the same way you did for your dress form and then cut the pattern pieces out of your fabric and cardboard following the instructions. The cardboard pieces are used for the armhole and wrist cover. I recommend cutting them out twice and orientating the lines of your cardboard the opposite ways to stabilize them. I, by the way, also cut out everything double as I plan on making the second arm as well. Take your upper and lower outer sleeve as well as your upper and lower inner sleeve and place them down on your working space like I did. Sew your inner and outer sleeve patterns together at the side seam. Oh yeah, also, I finally got water dissolvable pencils, which I can use to mark stuff on my fabric, and once I iron, the pencil marks are gone, which is so freaking cool, and I have no clue why I haven't had them in my working room for years, but anyways. Once the two side seams are done, I use my tailor's hem to iron those round seams open. I also made that myself, so if you're interested in how to make this tailor's hem, I put a link in the eye. This is really handy if you have curved seams like this pattern has. If you're wondering what material I'm using for this arm, I use the same fusing technique and general materials as I used in my DIY dress form video. I just switched out the natural muslin to a bleached one to match the rest of my dress form. Since I learned from my mistake last time and used the felt for the inside as a stabilizer and the muslin for the outside. So no pilling this time. Sew so the upper and lower sections together at the elbow line and iron it open as well. Let's talk about materials. I used 80 centimeters of each the bleached muslin, the felt, and the interfacing that fuses both fabrics together. That was plenty for cutting both arms, so I would say less fabric is needed than the instructions tell you, which is 80 centimeters. In my case, if you have any bigger sizes, it might vary. I also used a bunch of filling material, which is about half a kilo for one arm. You will obviously need a sewing machine and the cardboard, as well as a hand sewing needle and thread for the last step in the process. Yes, you you will have to sew that last bit shot by hand, but don't worry, it's just a small section. The upper outer sleeve pattern has a small dart at the shoulder area, which will be closed next. To guide me a bit while sewing, I just traced the sewing line from my pattern onto the fabric on the wrong side of the fabric using my washable marker. By the way, guys, if you haven't watched the DIY dress form video yet, I will put a link in the eye if you're interested. To use this arm, you obviously don't need the bootstrap fashion pattern dress form, but you need some kind of dress form to put the arm on, obviously. So that's a really, really good idea to just be able and make a custom sized dress form, which I highly recommend. I then continue to sew the dart in. Once done with that, I cut into the seam allowance about three centimeters higher than the end of the dart to be able to iron the upper part of the seam allowance open. The lower part just gets ironed flat from the right side of the fabric. The instructions say that you can highlight the seams in a colored zigzag stitch if you like, but as I don't have that option, I'm just gonna skip this step and put some tape on the finished product after I've attached it to the dress form. And with that, it's already time to close the remaining side seam, which also gets ironed open. A sleeve board like I have is very handy for this step. Thank you. 
Now it's time to sew the wrist covers on. The easiest way to do that is to cut into your seam allowance every centimeter or so and then sew the whole thing with the wrist piece laying on the sewing table and the arm kind of sticking up. While doing this step it also really really helps to just match up the notches on the arm and the wrist cover because it's going to be way easier than just trying to finesse everything in place while being on the sewing table already. The cardboard just gets stuck into place. I used a fast drying glue, which was dry in just a couple of seconds and it worked really, really well. Before turning the whole arm over, I cut down the seam allowance to about 5mm. This prevents too much bulging in the corners, which would make a weird shape after the arm is done. Okay, this is gonna take some time, but you can kinda wrap the arm around the wrist cardboard and then gradually fill the arm with your polyfill. This method worked really well once you've actually succeeded in the initial turnover, which was really hard. I almost wanted to do it in a different way that I hadn't even figured out yet, but in the end it worked and I was able to start filling my arm with polyfill. For me, again, same as for the dress form, it was really important to have a firmly stuffed arm that I can work with in the end. So I just shoved as much in there as there would fit and I really like the result. It has no lumps, it's not squishy, it's just perfect. So I would say don't understuff, just put as much in as possible. And this is what my arm looked like with the stuffing in there. Last thing to do, attaching the shoulder yoke and closing the arm. Take your yoke and lining piece and sew along the rounded corner to turn them over. I cut the seam allowance of my outer piece to about 5mm for it to lay nicer and proceeded to backstitch the seam. You backstitch by opening the two pieces up and folding the seam allowance toward the lining piece. Then stitch the seam allowance down closely to the original seam on the lining piece. I proceed to iron the whole thing flat. One thing I noticed with the shoulder yoke, especially with the lining piece of the shoulder yoke, once you iron the piece, the lining will be a bit too big. As it is a rounded shape, the lining piece doesn't need as much width to it as the outer piece needs. I therefore recommend you cut out the lining piece about three to five millimeters smaller around all the edges as you would do in other lining pieces as well. This is no exception. As I didn't do that, as I quite frankly wasn't really thinking about it, this is what happens if I follow instructions and don't think my process through myself. I had around one centimeter more fabric on my lining piece. I fixed that problem by just putting a small invisible dart in. Next up, attaching the armhole cover to the shoulder yoke. First thing you have to watch out is the sides you join together. After you checked your notches, make sure to have the armhole cover right side together with the left side of your shoulder yoke. Yes, you want the seam allowance to be on the right side of your shoulder yoke. This will be hidden once the cover yoke bundle is attached to the arm in kind of a sandwich way. To sew this, it's also better to cut into the seam allowance of the yoke, placing the armhole cover down on the machine and the yoke kind of sticking up. Once done with that, it should look something like this, and you can clearly see the sides and what goes where, so the yoke lining on the inside of the curve, the outer fabric of the yoke on the outer side where the seam allowance is. And in the end it's gonna go together like this. 
So to do that, I place my shoulder yoke and my arm right sides together. This is gonna be really tricky, especially if you fold the arm as much as I did. There is no way I can squish the arm under the sewing machine like with any normal piece. I ended up taking out a bit of a filling at the shoulder area to have at least a little bit of room. You should be able to sew from the inner seam to the outer seam along the shoulder line. The rest will stay open. I turn that over and place my cardboard for the armhole cover in the pocket that this created. It's easiest to base that pocket close so the cardboard stays in place. If you find your cardboard is a bit too big, just cut it of the arm. This is gonna help me sewing the last bit close by hand. And oh boy, <laughs> the hand sewing. As you guys know, I love me a bit of hand sewing in every project. Sometimes I like to sit and watch something interesting while hand sewing. I normally do really enjoy that. Not this time though. <laughs> and that is totally my fault, not the patterns or anybody else's. Because I chose such a thick material to make the arm out of, it was pretty tough to get my small needle through the layers to begin with. Then everything was filled up so much that I couldn't use needles or clamps or anything to help me hold it. So I had to almost cramp my fingers in a weird way to get everything as tight and neat as possible. I even had to use pliers to get the needle through. In the end, I poked my finger without me noticing and had blood stains all over the arm and my needle broke at the end. <laughs> What a journey! <laughs> but apart from that rather rough end, the arm came out perfectly and I could have not hoped for anything else. So let's give the arm just a quick iron and let's put it on the dress form and see how it looks and holds up. I'm so excited! You might have seen the lines that I put onto my dress form already in my Instagram stories because yes, I want to be more active on Instagram again and these lines are just helping me draft different pieces or drape different pieces rather. It's especially helpful if you have a certain neckline that you'd like to repeat over a couple of pieces. And also it gives you an idea before you drape of how your piece will end up looking. So you don't go in the draping process blindly, basically. For me, it's really handy. And I also wanted to put these lines on my arm to have guidelines there as well. It comes in pre-cut rolls, which stick very well to themselves, which is really nice. I would have hoped for it to stick better on fabric, but I just put small needles on the ends and covered them with another strip of tape. I, by the way, use the lines to drape a corset. If you're interested in draping in general, or would like me to show you how I draped a corset like this, leave me a comment down below. And that's it guys, now my custom dress form has a custom removable arm, which is so, so handy. I can't wait to work with it. You guys, I am so happy with how the arm turned out. It feels very sturdy and very professional. I highly recommend this pattern or also the dress form itself and then obviously the arm as an add-on. It's very useful especially if you have something with sleeves because it also gives you the shoulder slope and everything. As you guys know I'm a big big fan of my dress form that's why I'm even happier that I can offer you the discount code in case you want to remake your own dress form. I highly recommend it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please go subscribe to my channel. Also ring the bell to get notified whenever I post. If you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up and also it would help me out so, so much if you just leave a comment down below because that's gonna show YouTube that you like this video, that you enjoyed this video and it's maybe also gonna recommend this video or my channel or other videos of my channel to viewers with similar interests than you. That would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching 
and I'll see you next time. Bye guys! Yeah.